Welcome to another video. Let's find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this 3x3 three three matrix. Now, I will not be explaining the meaning of eigenvalue or eigenvectors. I just want to do calculation. It's just computation today. Now, if you need to know what they mean, I will leave the link in the description to the other videos where I broke down the meanings of those terms. Okay, let's get into the video. So our first move is to find the eigenvalues. And we just need to know that a minus lambda i, the determinant of that will be equal to zero. And that's so easy. We know that a minus lambda i, the determinant of this is equal to zero. And what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna come back and write the lambdas. So we're gonna have lambda one equals, we're gonna have lambda two, and we're gonna have, let's do it here, and then we're gonna have lambda three. Okay, so we're gonna have all our three lambdas here, but let's do the calculation here. Let's take this determinant. The determinant of this, remember we're subtracting lambda, so it's gonna be two minus lambda, we have zero, one, and then we have minus one, here we have four minus lambda, four minus lambda, so the lambdas are subtracted along the main diagonal, and then we have minus one, and this is gonna be minus one, two, and this is zero minus one, zero minus lambda, rather. So I'm just gonna write minus lambda. So here we need to take this determinant and we know this has to be equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna take this and say that two minus lambda multiplied by the determinant of this, four minus lambda minus one, 2 minus lambda, that's the first step, okay? Minus, well, 0, if it's use this one, you don't need to bother yourself because whatever you multiply by 0 is going to end up as 0. That's why I chose this um, row. So let's pick this one. It's going to be plus, minus, plus. So it's just a plus, and then I have 1. Let's just write it times. The determinant of um, this is going to be minus 1. You have 4 minus lambda. You have minus 1. You have 2. So you're watching this because you already know how to take determinants of a 3x3 three three matrix. If you don't, well, I'll leave the link in the description also. And this is what we have, and this is equal to 0. So let's multiply this out. You have 2 minus lambda multiplied by the determinant of this is going to be negative lambda times um, 4 minus lambda minus 2 times minus 1 is minus, so that's going to be plus 2. We close this, plus. We go in here, it's going to be, um, what would this be? This is going to be negative 2 minus, which is going to be plus, because this times this would be this, and you have 4 minus lambda. Okay, equals 0. Let's simplify. A bunch of algebra. Remember, it's this, multiply this, minus this product. So if I try to simplify each of the parentheses, I'm going to get 2 minus lambda. I have here, I have... I'm going to end up with lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 2. And here I have plus, what would this be? I'm going to have um, plus 2. Oh, it's 2 minus lambda. Oh, looks like there's a 2 minus lambda here too. So I can easily factor these. So I have 2 minus lambda. And then on the inside, I have, there's going to be a 1 left here. Add that 1 to this 2 when you remove the parentheses it's going to become lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 3 equals 0. Nice. Now, what is my... Here, I know that this is now a cubic equation, but it's, it's in factored form. So if I write it out, it's going to be 2 minus lambda. If I factor this, this is going to be lambda minus 1. Oh, and lambda minus 3 that's gonna be zero. So that tells me that my lambda one is two, whatever makes this zero. So I have two, I got one, I got three. Oh, nice. I can write this as one, two, and three. So that's the process. Remember, taking the determinant is the hardest part. Once you take the determinant, you can solve the equation you get at the end, and you get your eigenvalues. So we have obtained the eigenvalues 
for this. And all we did was subtract lambda from each of these main diagonal entries and take the determinant, which we did here. And this is where we are. So now let's go find the eigenvectors. Because I'm going to give you some exercises at the end of this video, I am just going to do the calculation for the eigenvectors when lambda is equal to 1. Now, for lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3, I'll just tell you what the answers are at the end of the video, but I'll need you to do that yourself. Or maybe I shouldn't tell you the answer. <laughs> well, I'll decide that at the end. Okay, so how do you get the eigenvectors, eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals, lambda equals 1? Well, we're going to say when lambda is equal to 1, do this. Look, we'll go back to the matrix. We're going to be subtracting one from each of these, okay? So we know that a minus lambda i, that thing we used here, instead of finding the determinant, we just want the matrix, it's going to be 2 minus 1 is going to, let's write it, 2 minus 1, 0, 1. We're going to have negative 1, 4 minus 1, minus 1, and then we're going to have negative 1, 2, 0 minus 1. So this is what we have. And we know that whenever you multiply this by the matrix, I think I have to rewrite this. So if we multiply this by the vectors x1, x2, x3, by the vector, this vector, you're going to always get 0. And that is from the equation. I need to erase this. And that is from the de basic definition that a minus lambda i multiplied by the eigenvector of lambda is equal to zero. So what we have here is this matrix. This is the v we're looking for, and you will always get the zero vector. Now, we're looking for the v corresponding to this lambda. So if I call this lambda 1, this is v1. So you're going to get three of them since we have three different lambdas. Okay, so now let's do this calculation. Let's resolve this. So what we have, so say lambda equals 1. So we have, um, this is going to be 1. So the matrix we have actually looks like this. We have 1, 0, and 1. And then we have minus 1, 3, and minus 1 minus 1, 3, minus 1, and then we have minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, by x1, x2, x3 is equal to 0, 0, 0. My recommendation is you solve a system of equations, but this is very easy to solve because what you're saying is that, you see, when you multiply this way, this is 1 times x1, 0 times x2, 1 times x3. So the x2 is 0, so it will not show up. What you know is that 1 times x1, x1 plus the last one, which is x3, is equal to 0. And what does this mean? It simply means that x1 is negative x3. Or you can say x3, let's put it this way, x3 is equal to negative x1. Let's write everything in terms of x1, okay? It's just better, so you start with a 1, you don't start with a 0. It doesn't matter what you choose, okay? Just keep going. Now, if I go to the second one, I know that negative x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. But I already said that x3 is negative x1. So I'm going to go here and replace x3 with negative x1. You see that? But if I put negative x1, it's going to become positive x1. But positive x1 minus x1 tells me that 3x2 equals 0, which implies x2 is equal to 0. So now I have found x2. At this point, this is where many students get confused. Do not try to solve to know what x1 is because nobody knows. Don't try to find x2, but 
Unfortunately, we were just trying to find x2 in terms of x1, but it turns out that x2 will always be zero. Are we done? Yes, because now we know that whenever we know we just choose something, we can choose for x2. x2 will always be zero. But we can choose for x1, and we know what x3 is going to be. We can choose for x3, we know what x2 is going to be. So all you're saying is eigen vector corresponding to lambda 1 equals 1 is, you want to know what that is? I'm going to write it here. It is this vector. x1, x2, x3. We know x2 is always 0, no matter how you try. What will x3 be? We don't know. What is x1 going to be? We don't know. But typically, you just choose 1, okay? I'm going to say whenever x1 is 1, x3 is going to be minus 1. So, let x1 be 1, let x1 be minus 1. Now, in this case, don't choose 0, because if you choose 0 here, it means that everything is going to be 0, and an eigenvector can never be the 0 vector, so you can't do that. Now, you can choose 2, you can choose 7, it doesn't matter, but it just makes sense to choose 1, because 1 is easy to manipulate. So that's why we fix this to be 1, pick this to be minus 1. Now you'll ask me, what if I say x1 is minus 1? That's fine, nobody's, nobody's troubling you. Just make sure you keep your order. You're free to choose this, because again, if I multiply this by minus 1, it doesn't change the eigenvector. That's your answer. So remember, the mission is not to solve for x1, x2, x3. It's just to be able to write x2 in terms of x1, x3 in terms of x1, okay? And some people do it the other way. But just write all of them in terms of one of the um, components and then use it to form your eigenvector. There's nothing else to do. Do the same thing when lambda equals 2 and when lambda equals 3. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, let me tell you what the answer to the other ones are in case you want to check. I'll leave it in the description. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.